Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at a worked example or for actuarial students. This is a risk modeling and survival analysis with R example. So this corresponds to the CS2B curriculum which develops knowledge of and the ability to apply statistical methods for risk modeling, time series analysis, stochastic processes including Markov chains, survival analysis and so forth and it also does a little bit on machine learning. Now this is the second question of a paper and I'm only going to do the first half of this question because the second part is different. It's well it's just wor it's worth doing separately. Okay so this question is about the exponential distribution and an exponential distribution has a, has a parameter of lambda equals 0 0.4. Now this is actually the rate parameter and when we type it into R, we'll call this rate. Rate equals 0.4. Use the inbuilt functions in R to perform the following tasks. So this is the first task, the first exercise. Simulate 1,000 values from this distribution, assigning this to a, a variable, vector actually, called exp vector, exponential underscore vector, and calculate the mean and the variance of the simulated values. Paste your results into the, of, the, of your calculation into your answer. So the command we're going to use is REXP. Now R is to say state the generate random numbers. And EXP is the part that indicates what probability distribution that we're going to be using. In this case, it's the exponential distribution. Here we have the number of observations that we want. In this case, I'm just using five. And here we have the five. Okay. And here what we do is we specify the parameter or uh, according to the, the correct parameters according to pro the probability distribution that we're going to be using. Here we're going to be using the exponential distribution and we're told that lambda is equal to 0 0.4 so we specify here rate equals 0 0.4. For other probability distributions we would have different parameters that would be correct for those different dif distributions. For example, the binomial distribution would have as their parameters n, sample size, the number of trials, and p, the probability of success, and they would have the names size and prob accordingly in the code. So what I'm going to do is just demonstrate the fact that when I rerun this piece of code, I don't get consistent answers. I've just rerun it there, and I am getting different numbers again. And here, if I run it two more times, I get different numbers again. Okay, suppose I want to keep a bit of consistency with the code I am running and that I want to get a consistent set of results. Now, there are reasons why you might do that. So what you could do there is set the seed, uh, one, two, three, four in this case. I'm just sort of picking that as, as my own personal preference. But what will happen here is that each time I run this piece of code, I get the same output from each uh, time each time I run the code. Okay, so there we have the three sort of iterations of that, and just the same each time. Now there's sort of this is what is called reproducibility, and it's sort of good to have in a statistical analysis. So let's set it up. I'm going to set my seed at one, two, three, four. And I'm going to use this piece of code here. Now I'm setting the number of observations to 1000. And my rate parameter here is 0 0.4. I don't have to put in rate equals 0 0.4. It just sort of knows that it should be 0 0.4. So that sets up my vector of exponential simulated values. Okay. And if I want to get the mean, just type mean of the vector, mean of the exponential vector. Okay. 2.502. I'm also asked for the variance. So here we have the command var, B A R, and just specify the vector that we want, the data set we want. In this case, it's 6.393. Just as a sort of quick remark, there's some other useful commands that are well worth knowing. For example, summary right down here at the bottom. This gives you a, a very quick statistical summary of the data set that you're going to be working with. Now, it doesn't give the variance or the standard deviation or anything like that. It does, gives you the quartiles, the maximum and the minimum, but it's well worth exploring commands like this and functionality like this uh, beyond, because there's well much more beyond, you know, just summary. 
So just as a quick remark, how close are these to our analytical results? So the mean and variance will vary due to random number generations. That's more so uh, in, the, in the context when you don't use a seed. So when you do use a seed, that cuts out the fluctuations to get reproducible answers. But be beforehand, the, uh, before we use the seed, that there would have been uh, a bit of fluctuation. So if the sample size was large enough, this is what we should get analytically. The exponential uh, mean is 1 over lambda, which is 2.5, and the variance is 1 over lambda squared, which is 6.25. So those values there are close enough. This is actually very, very close, but it's probably just a coincidence. Uh, the, the variance, 6.39. Close enough when you consider that the variance is the square, if you get me, it's the square of the under, it's denominated, denominated in the square units of the underlying variable. So that's the, the, the fluctuations larger fluctuations of the variance are not so uh, worrying okay so part two plot a histogram of x vector showing the frequencies and paste the plot into your answer so this is straightforward enough uh, the command here is hist h-i-s-t okay and we just name the uh, the vector that we want and we can also specify the number of breaks here just to sort of make it a little bit easier to look at we can specify how many intervals essentially breaks equals 50 i just chose 50 there randomly just as a quick remark if you want to sort of make it a little bit more colorful or easier to read you can go a little bit further you can add in color codes here i just use light blue and pink you can add in more colors again but it just actually makes it a little bit more readable again just to sort of have a sort of color scheme throughout just make it easier to look at uh, there, just as a quick remark, the actuarial exams sort of work on the basis of base R. There are other R packages that you can use to create histograms such as ggplot. They're well worth knowing, but they're not part of the syllabus, the CS2B syllabus. That you, It's beyond that syllabus. I'm sort of sticking to the syllabus, but it's well worth knowing about those uh, other R packages going, and learning as much as you can about R. So part three is uh, plot the probability density function for this distribution as a scatter plot and as a line plot. So first off, what I'm going to do is set up a sequence here of uh, values, x values. Essentially, this is a, um, a range of numbers between 0 and 20, okay, that are consistently separated by 0 0.5, okay. Essentially, what I'm going to do is set up my x-axis, okay. And I'm going to pick it from 0 to 20. That's a sort of informed decision. That's an educated guess about what sort of range of values I should pick. 0 to 20 that corresponding to this distribution. So there we have them there. Okay. And this is what we're going to use to set up our graph, our plots. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is use the probability density function. And I am going to create the probability density function using this command d exp okay so d for density function and exp for the distribution x is the points that we've just sort of created there previously uh, 0 to 20 in intervals of 0 0.5 and this is our rate parameter i'm going to call this pdf okay probability density function so here is the probability density function of that corresponds to each of the values of x and what i'm going to do there is just plot them okay so this is the scatter plot essentially what i'm going to do here has have x on the x-axis and pdf on the y-axis and just have my little set of scatter uh, plot points just going through it like that that's just uh, all you can do all you can do uh, doing a line plot instead, what we do here is just add in the additional specification. Type equals L, L in quotation marks. Okay, it doesn't really matter if it's one, uh, single or double quotation marks. And that is what the plot will look, uh, the line plot will look like. It's essentially containing the same sort of information as the scatter plot, but just a smooth line instead. Uh, just as a sort of quick remark, we can enhance these plots. Now, it's not part of the exam, but it's also... You know, it's nice to sort of extend your knowledge of R by, we can change the color, color equals red, okay, COL for color, and just name the color, lowercase letters, 
and we can also make it a little bit thicker to look at the line with uh, line width LWD just sort of make it a more thicker line just make it easier to read easier to see in a plot uh, here I just picked out 2.4 as a value I like it's thick but not too not too much right uh, I think we'll leave it there